inviting me uh, to participate in this workshop. I'm really delighted to be um, kind of outside my area studies in Russian <laughs> and East European study, studies context for once and see things from a new perspective. It's really, val it's really uh, valuable for my own, own research project. But it's just, at, at once this is also kind of disclaimer that I am looking at this case study from the point of view of my kind of area studies bubble, somehow trying to motivate this case study of Nordic TV series. How can we analyze this when we're still you know, talking about Russia, which is also always a special case. So that's kind of the, the background. Uh, and another disclaimer, I'm not, I have a, a little bit of an identity crisis right now because I'm not talking about noir, I'm, I, I am going to talk about Nordic and then uh, trying to apply a geopolitics perspective on my, on my case, but um, I'm talking about this, um, but if we talk about popular Nordic TV series, it's quite impossible not to talk about my case study, which is scum, <laughs> uh, and just to go through the facts. In fact, uh, Scum uh, in English Shame is a hit teen drama series produced by the Norwegian national broadcast company on our, on our K, NRK. Uh, it ran for four seasons from 2015 through to 2017 and depicts a group of well-to-do high school students at Hartvik Nissen School in Oslo. Uh, Scum was directed and written by Julie Andem and the production began with an extensive interviews with Norwegian teenagers, and I think this is an important factor of uh, why it became so popular. And SCUM's production model is quite avant-garde, uh, as it was targeted to the digital native uh, audience, most of all, um, and relying on real-time internet distribution of single scenes, with the story unfolding parallel in parallel uh, social media profiles of real like real social media profiles of fictional characters of the, of the series. And one of the novelties was that fictional time of the series was fully compatible with the real time kind of the audience, which produced an all-encompassing lifelike media uh, experience. And uh, Scam was a huge, or and still is, a huge international success. It was sold to a number of different countries, and the original series was followed by German, French, Italian, and Spanish remakes, and I think there's also one in the Netherlands. And uh, this year, Andem has been overseeing the production of the American version, Scum Austin, and it's, I think, very telling that the title of the American series is still Scum Austin and not Shame. So the brand is really doing a great job. Sorry. Yeah, so. Um, so this all kind of tells us the Scum can be added to the group of new Nordic television series that contribute to the current global brand of Scandinavia as the source of innovative quality TV. And SCUM has definitely contributed to the Norway's national brand in a very positive way. And the visual image of the series can consist of a beautiful young cast, a background of Arctic beautiful nature, wealthy and reliable state institutions and infra infrastructures. Uh, which include the school, legal system, the sleep escape of modern day Oslo, and also these kind of references to fun and interesting national customs and symbols. For example, the all, all year high school graduation party, Rus, uh, Norway's Independence Day, flags are, are there constantly, national costumes, and of course, this cozy knitwear that was already <laughs> actually also included in the encyclopedia. And all this has attracted a stream of tourists uh, to witness scum set location as they are in real life. And being a popular teen series, it is probably no surprise that scum is currently also one of the biggest global fan cultures. Uh, and fans in different countries commented ardently on each episode and social media post from the scum production team. Uh, translated and share, shared these materials across language and cultural borders produced hundreds of thousands of memes and fun, fun art pictures and fan fiction stories. And according to a recent New Yorker article, there's currently over 4,000 fun, fun fiction stories about the scum characters. And this means that informal networks also, also and social media play an important role in creating this global scum phenomenon. 
And what, it's, what is very significant for my discussion today is that SCAM has been very success, success, successful also in countries where it has not necessarily been available through any formal uh, or industry network. And this means that there has not been national moderator or industry gatekeeper to uh, distribute or package the series to the, the audience. And on the contrary, all its content, and that includes both the original episodes, the additional materials by N R N N R K, its media coverage, uh, and and the wealth of fan-produced content is distributed all horizontally on both global and national social media sites. And Chinese fans are very often mentioned, and their use of the Weibo, the national Weibo platform, in this regard. While my paper now um, will discuss the similar context of the Russian language fan community on Vkontakte, that's known as the Russian Facebook. So the Russian uh, fan community of SCAM is pretty substantial in size. There are several fan mm -hmm. profiles with hundreds of thousands of followers. And here are uh, my examples. And for this talk particularly, I'm drawing some of my materials from a spin-off fan profile devoted to just two characters of the series, Isaac and Evan. Uh, and they also have quite many followers. And together the Russian-speaking scum community has shared over 40,200 posts on Vkontakte and the accounts are constantly updating, although the series, like the original series, st stopped uh, almost two years ago, or like uh, ended. Uh, my aim is to analyze the, Russian, uh, the ways Russian scum fans discuss sexual politics, especially LGBT rights, against the backdrop of the international brand of Norden and the particular imagery of Norway created through the above-mentioned characteristics of scum, which is its people, infrastructures, and national symbols. And for my analysis of scum, I'm interested in investigating how the very strong emotional register of online fan communication, this kind of affective media use and vernacular create creativity, characteristic of online subcultures are used to reimagine the Nordic and Northern in a transnational axis, that is Norway, Russia in my case. And my analysis thus, thus operates at the intersection of fan studies and popular geopolitics. And furthermore, I'm particularly interested in looking at what is the role of teen series and teen audiences in the study of geopolitical television, as uh, <laughs> Robert has um, used the term in its 3.0 stage, that is television understood as fan-based co-production, which like teens are very good at, at this. <laughs> and in the case of SCAM, it looks like the Norwegian government or state, which is like the facilitator of, of the series, is engaging the entire global youth to think about and comment on such timely issues of international politics, such as immigration, especially Syrian refugees was a, as a theme in, in one, one season, LGBT rights and integration of Islam communities, that was also a topic in, in the last season of the series. And these themes constitute important threats in SCUM's overlapping storylines that otherwise can focus on more <coughs> conventional teen topics, uh, friendships, dating and parties. So in the remainder of this paper, I try to present my very pre preliminary analysis of how Russian fans on Vkontakte negotiate between two national and cultural contexts, a Russian and Norwegian, to overcome some tensions embedded in contemporary gender and sexual politics that take place increasingly in an international arena, uh, which I mean that there's the global pride and LGBT movement versus the global anti-gender backlash as part of the conservative uh, national politics in many many European countries, not only Russia. <laughs> Here the main reference to the original series is the third season, which centers around the coming out story of young Isaac, 17-year-old year old sophomore at Hartwig Nissen. And this season was the highest rating and internationally <coughs> most popular season of SCAM. And the phenomenon landed in Russia also during this, uh, this when this season was airing in Norway. And for example, both the, what claims to be the official fan profile Scum Family and the spin-off profile Isaac and Even were founded at the time when this season was into its fourth week in Norway. And this, this season was showing on Finnish national TV and surrounded by huge media hype, I can start to follow the Russian fan sites with uh, great interest. 
and at the same time I was also working on another Russian language online fan culture around a very marginal amateur web series called Stervochki, like bitches. So I was already familiar with the ways Russian platforms are used effectively for fan activities. And there's also um, Natalia Samutina's brilliant work on Harry Potter online fan community. And based on these examples, I've also become aware that the fact that fan cultures deriving from the context of global popular culture are used as platforms to discuss issues of gender and sexuality outside and beyond uh, the national paradigm. And Samutina, for, for instance, highlights the role of fan communities and popular culture's melodramatic whole code in reimagining emotional and effective uh, content in, re in relation to transgressive representations of non-heteronormative normative sexualities in Russia. And as we can all know, Russia's national paradigm of sexual politics is currently defined by the notorious 2013 law banning homosexual propaganda among minors which makes room for aggressively homophobic statements and actions in the public sphere. And hate crime against LGBT is on the rise. And this way the Russian and Norwegian frameworks are in contradiction when we talk, talk about this uh, fan culture. And Norway was actually the first Scandinavian country to pass equal marriage law in 2009. And obviously it would not be impossible to show scum in, in Russian uh, a context in, and market in it in the way that it was in, in its original context. And I'm not sure if this was intentional, oh, sorry, if that, is, if that was intentional criticism of Russia's sexual politics by scum scriptwriters, but Russia as a geopolitical actor does appear in the coming out story of Isaac. At the blot and, the, and uh, this guy Evans' role as the love interest and further future partner is activated through an embedded mini-story of same-sex same sex great power romance in, in Stam. Uh, after his first, first encounter with Evan, Isaac kind of cyber stalks him and finds a video in which Evan talks about his school film project. And he says in the video, the movie is about Captain America and Vladimir Putin, who are in love with each other, but they cannot be together because Sarah Palin has bewitched them, and every time they kiss, a cat dies of age. So that's kind of the reference. And it was actually quite surprising to see that the Russian fans do not make much of a deal of this. Under the subtitled video of the episode on Vkontakte, there are all in all 153 comments, as you can see. And only three comments make notice of this Putin reference. <laughs> and none of them get any response from other posters. And one of them, the three comments actually asks, why isn't anybody talking about Putin? <laughs> so yes, my question too would be like, why isn't anybody talking about Putin in this Russian-speaking scum fan, fan community? Although this fragment certainly offers an intriguing interpretive frame of popular great power geopolitics to discuss this LGBT topic. And my answer to this question would be that this is not how online fan communities work. Uh, they constitute their own rules and interpretative, interpretative frameworks. And in this case of SCUM, this is first of all the global fan community, with, which is a rhizomic formation of different fan profiles, sites and video platforms where fans share knowledge. And at least at this stage of my analysis, it seems that the main purpose of the SCUM online fandom is to constitute an exhaustive, like this total archive of every bit and piece of information available that has any connection to the series, including the ever-increasing volume of fans' own reproduction through their artistic and creative work. And the SCUM fan community is a different one um, compared to the Russian media bubble that kind of we all live in and the, the Russia's uh, international image as a you know, very Putin-centered uh, entity. So that's kind of interesting. And therefore geopolitical reading, uh, but still kind of I think the geopolitical reading of this fan community remains relevant. Uh, for example, the controversy between the fan profile's discourse of gender and sexuality and the gender and sexual politics practiced by the Russian government comes across in the disclaimer on top of this Isaac, plus, uh, Isaac and Evan fan page. Uh, the disclaimer says, the age limit of this forum is 18 plus, and the administrators do not take responsibility of people younger than that seeing content on this site. 
All information is provided exclusively for entertainment, not for propaganda purposes. <laughs> and then the disclaimer continues. It's a cliché, but you never know who will die tomorrow, even if you believe in Allah or Jesus or the revolution, uh, evolution theory <laughs> or in parallel universes. There is only one thing we know for sure, what is happening right now. So it actually summarizes some of the philosophical content of the third uh, season of the series simultaneously taking what is going to be discussed and showed on the fan profile from the hands of the state to kind of the higher realm of beliefs and life philosophies and this way interestingly legitimizes the celebration of teenager gay love as the core message of the, the profile which is basically they reproduce these kissing scenes endlessly <laughs> in this fan profile and the comment says like I've never seen anything more amazing in my life and that's that's uh, that's very interesting. Um, but visual reminders of Norwegian state uh, institutions and national symbols are not prominent, but remain in the background and appear in the news feed from time to time. And one of them is, for example, the cityscape of Oslo, which they also praise in outside the, the kissing pictures also. Like, Oslo is so cool, it's so beautiful, the architecture there is so beautiful. And this is one popular genre to make a collage and reproduce Isaac and Evan kissing, um, is to um, combine the cityscape uh, also al almost as, if, as an important eyewitness to Isaac and Evan's love story. Um, and this background location, I think, receives an ideal and idealized meaning through further production of Isaac and Evan kisses against more these kind of more uh, metaphorical images of pure and untouched nature and landscapes, which are like also kind of they are reproducing these both images in the in the news feed. Um, so in a way, I think this oscillation between different geographical codes, this like realistic and metaphorical city versus nature, architecture versus natural land formations. Uh, can be interpreted to mean that there's something unattainable in this love story, something that continues to escape to the domain of the metaphorical and imaginary, as we're all kind of mm -hmm. um, addressed these uh, topics before. But in the context of the Russian fan profile, mm -hmm. this symbol can also be interpreted as the struggle for finding expressions to the var variety of forms love can take, which is evoked in a small conversation actually between two fans under a picture of uh, Evans uh, actor uh, being in another, another uh, theater production and playing a prince. And there's a, a comment that says Antariai, which is the actor of Isaac, saying that uh, Antariai is his princess. And then another fan replies, no, in Norway it's possible for a prince to have a prince. <laughs> and this small conversation determines the boundaries of discourse also. Uh, different like legal and so societal frameworks have an impact on how imagination can work, but this transnational context might help kind of reconfiguring these borders. And when prominent um, national symbols are used in this fan profile, the message is quite strong, as we can see here. These are like two, two posts from like a year apart from each other, celebrating the Norwegian Constitution Day on May 17th, which co coincides with the International Day Against Homophobia. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is acknowledged in both, both cases with an image where the Norwegian flag and Isaac and Evan as a couple kissing openly uh, are in kind of juxtaposed and, and mm -hmm. um, combined. And, of course, like in, in this representation, the nation-state Norway equals LGBT rights and sexual liberation. And then uh, there's a very small amount of kind of this like a Russian context in the, on the fan profile. But sometimes there is this kind of negotiation of bringing like finding some parallels between the Russian national symbols and the Norwegian framework or bringing like from bringing some examples from Russian uh, TV and film history that like these might be the, the, the Russian version of the Isaac 
in, in, our, in our culture. So there is this kind of constant negotiation of like finding some kind of common ground also between the kind of the, the two poles, Norwegian and Russia. So short conclusions that I can draw with this like really uh, sporadic and fragmentary material that I'm working with is that when Russians fan, Russian fans uh, take part in the effective reproduction of Isaac and Evan's story, they are forced kind of to make comparisons between Norwegian and Russian societies with different uh, rules and regulations. On the fan side, there is an ongoing dialogue between the global space of the internet and this particular fandom, as well as the national context of Russian society and Russian fans also negotiating their own rules and their own take on this issue and um, declaring these rules to the other fans who are you know, joining these websites and these uh, fan profiles. So I'm sure that they're heavily moderated, that they're not allowing any homophobic comments and there are sometimes you can see um, interesting kind of borderline cases on, on the comments sections. And, but most importantly, I think, and that comes back to what I was saying before, this Russian-speaking scum fan community is a huge translation project of televisual content that would not be available through other channels for t uh, Russian speakers. Translations cover Russian subtitles to the original episodes, scum's media coverage retrieved mostly from Norwegian national media, remakes in six different languages, and global fan materials. So not everything is produced by Russian, but it's translated and transmitted from uh, the, the enormous um, global uh, archive of scum materials. Um, in, a, in a word, Russian fan community is a huge multilingual, cross-cultural, transnational effort of netizen activity, with Russia and Norway being the two focal centers of this production. And geopolitical imagination at play is at play in this production through sharing images and storytelling. This is fan fiction stories that are also translated and shared on the platform, and also the Russian fans uh, write their own fan fiction stories. And this means that the fans are const constructing a view of the world through continuous symbolic work, interpretation, of this cultural resource and also reinterpretation through participation and identification in various ways. And Russian scum fans uh, engage with Norway, simultaneously co creating an imaginary and idealized space to talk about LGBT issues related to this very wealthy modern country, Norway, with beautiful landscape and cityscape. Um, and the last larger question of this paper, I think, would concern the role of youth and teen audiences in popular geopolitics and producing and reproducing different, you know, representations, which is like, because the, the example showed that they might be quite different from what the television producers embed in their, pro, in their productions and then the, the geopolitical undercurrent that goes on on the website, on the fan forum. So that's kind of what I struggle with. I can't find mm -hmm. ways to access uh, that right now. Uh, how much do TV series produced for teen audiences count in the global geopolitical terrain? terrain, terrain? Uh, the fact is that these audiences are the most active users and participants in online fandom and therefore they count uh, for producers of modern TV a lot. Actually, TV productions are built more and more to this like active internet participation and distribution. So thank you very much. Thank you.